Hey YouTube, this video is for people that believe this book, okay? If you don't believe this book, then this video probably isn't for you because you're not going to, you know, get it, most likely. But, you know, you're welcome to watch anyway. Um, Jonathan Clack is at it again, and, um, you know... I've had several windows open on my computer for a few days now, and I've been hesitating about doing this. But, you know, he's accused everybody that doesn't believe in him, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, et cetera, et cetera. So let, let's go into that really quick. What exactly is blasphemy? Okay. Now, of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I'm not going to read all this to you, but this talks about how the Pharisees were accusing Jesus of, uh, you know, doing miracles in the name of Beelzebub, and uh, in uh, and it's spoken about in Mark and Matthew. Um, but um, really quick, down here at the end, it, it talks about you can't commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit in this day and age. Because the people that did that back then were basically standing in the very presence of God, witnessing things, seeing it with their own eyes, and um, they basically assigned what God was doing to Satan. However, you can commit the unpardonable sin, and it got, this article here states that... Um, uh, the impartable sin today is a state of continued unbelief. So, you know, that would include what's written in this book. Okay. So, um, it talks about the Spirit currently convicts the unsaved world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. In, talk, in reference to John 16.8. All right, and then here's a couple of quick definitions of blasphemy. Um, specifically, in a theological sense, a crime of assuming to oneself the rights or qualities of God. And I would even say that that would include uh, assigning the rights or qualities of God to, to an entity that doesn't deserve it or is not God. Okay? Um, here's another quick definition, uh, an illegal definition. The crime of insulting or showing contempt or the lack of reverence for God uh, or a religion and its doctrines or writings, especially God as perceived by Christianity and Christian doctrines and writings. Okay, so that said, um, Jonathan, like I said, he's, he's running around telling everybody that... Uh, Satan owns all flesh, and nothing can be further from the truth. Uh, in this particular video here, he's using Strong's, and he's looking up the word H430, uh, uh, and he's saying that angels created uh, man. Okay? I mean, he's really getting out there further and further and further every day so uh, you can see here on the screen that he's got Strong's pulled up uh, in the definition of H30 and he's highlighted uh, angels down here okay so but that's not the whole definition if you go to Genesis uh, 26, um, it says that, uh, and God said, let us make man in our, in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image. 
in the likeness of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree. That's interesting. Tree. Which in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat okay so you know Genesis uh, Jonathan's always referencing um, how Eve and Adam ate of the this tree which is supposed to be for meat and he likens the tree to having sex with Satan but not getting off track here. But since I was reading that, I just wanted to point that out. Because it says right here that it, uh, it, it's for meat. Okay? Anyway, um, 130, verse 130 there, uh, says, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it and it was so. <clears throat> and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay? So, now, let's click on to get a strong definition of God. Okay? It's the same... Uh, 430 that Jonathan was using and um, it, it lists the different meanings and notice down here the last two which Jonathan's description didn't show was the true God and also God but he zeroed in on angels so Jonathan has an agenda he wants to trying to convince you that angels created man okay so now that I've debunked that that this Strong's 430 can mean the true God and or God and not exclusively angels um, hopefully that will uh, enlighten some people I'll blow this up again. There it is, H30. Look down here. See how he zeroed in on angels. Okay? But his definition doesn't say anything about the true God or God. It, it does say God here. But again, he has an agenda. Okay? So, uh, next thing I wanted to point out is um, Genesis 9 and this was obviously after the flood and after the water settled and everything and here's God speaking uh, to Noah and, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth same exact thing that he said in Genesis 1 alright so let's click on God here imagine that 430 okay again one of the definitions for God is the true God or God. So it's not exclusively angels or rulers or judges or anything like that. Okay? So, and then I want to take you, and real importantly, to um, Jeremiah 32, verses 26 and 27. Okay? Because this is really going to put a nail on Jonathan's false teaching. Coffin of his false teaching. Okay, so we got Jeremiah 32, 26 and 27. Okay? And it says, 
Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, and there is, is there anything too hard for me? Again, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Okay. So let's click on Lord. Jehovah, the existing one. The proper name of the one true God. Okay. Again, the proper name of the one true God. All right. And we'll go back and we'll click on God here. Imagine that. 430 again. Okay, so that just goes to show that Job admitted that the one true God created him. Okay? And he, he actually goes into great lengths. He talks about how uh, God made his bones and his ligaments and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I won't go there because this is, this is going to be a, too long of a video already. Okay. Now, um, let me go here so you can hear this for yourself. I'm just pay, play a little clip. Uh, of this where Jonathan actually admits that he's teaching that Satan is the god of all flesh. Now, just in case you don't believe me, let's go ahead and look up, you know, let's just go to Luke and uh, where we don't have all the little numbers popping up. So let's go to Luke, okay, chapter 1, and let me show you real quick. We'll go to verse 35, so here we go, Luke chapter 1, verse 35, here we go, let me show you something really amazing, because I told you Satan owns the flesh, but Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh, okay, he says that Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh, Jesus didn't come in the likeful likeness of sinful flesh, Jesus came in the flesh, he didn't, again, he didn't come in the likeness of sinful flesh. He came in the flesh. Let's take a look at um, John, the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of that light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the light, that was the true light, that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. Does that sound like a, he came to the creation of Satan? No. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave, to, he, gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believeth on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Again, but of God. Again, born of God. Okay? And the Word was made flesh. It didn't say the image of flesh, the likeness of sinful flesh. It says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay? All right. Now, uh, something else I want to talk about. Jonathan is always running around saying he's a fallen angel. 
Not only is he a fallen angel, he's teaching that everybody's a fallen angel. Well, he's saying that we're all fallen angels. Um, he's Again, he says that Satan owns the flesh. Um, now, anybody that studied these New Agers and um, all these people that uh, channel these entities that are supposed to be ascended masters and beings and I said you know um, you know one of the things that that you know people are saying that's going to happen is if and when these ascended masters angels whatever they're trying to say they are personally I think that they're demons and are fallen angels and it's, I think that's the great deception um, they're going to come back and they're going to say that they created us. Okay? And basically, if you think about that, Jonathan's saying the same thing right here and right now. Not only is he saying that, you know, angels, fallen angels, created us, and Jesus had to come to redeem us, but he's also saying that, um, He himself is a fallen angel. And uh, again, and we all, uh, allegedly, we're all fallen angels, which isn't true. Now, he also says that uh, uh, Archangel Michael appeared to him uh, and ordered him to pray a Hail Mary, which is praying to a pagan god. Can anybody show me one verse in the scripture, anywhere in the scripture, where an angel of God commanded someone to commit sin? I'd really like for someone to point that out to me, if you can do that. Um, now, I also would like to point out that, you know, in Mormon theology, this is the same thing that happened in the Mormon uh that founded the Mormon when Joseph Smith said the angel, this angel Moroni appeared to him and gave him all this alleged knowledge, and that's how Mormonism started. And of course, we all know, if, we, if you're a Christian, that that's a, a false cult. It's a non-Christian cult. Also, same thing with Islam. Um, Islam teaches that allegedly Gabriel appeared to Muhammad and that's uh, where Muhammad got, you know, the inspiration and the Islamic scriptures. So just just something that I want you to I want to point out because this is the same mo that Cleck uh, is pushing here. So um, okay, so we we just played that one, and now I want to play this one for you real quick. I'm about done here. And, you know, he's got this obsession going with the human anatomy. I mean, it, it's just, other people have noticed it and mentioned it, and it's just, it's, it's creepy. It's like every video, he's pushing this. And, um, you know, I'm a little bit uh, you know, concerned about him. Uh, um, but let's listen to this video, and I'll give you some more feedback here real quick. So anyway, I'm going to take this uh, image right here, and I'm going to lay it right on top. See, it's the same. Yes, it is. It's just perfect. No, it's so, not. Um, <laughs> it's not I'm going to show you that the female reproductive system is actually exactly the same as the satanic. Exactly uh, the same? Of, you know, back in that. They, uh, because Satan owns, this is Satan's flesh. Do you understand? No. Okay, so, whoops. See, come to the left. See. We don't understand. No, it's not an exact match, and he doesn't own the flesh. But anyway, let me continue. Okay. Now, um, I'll take this and da, 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 see. Um, because all flesh belongs to the devil, okay? Now, just let's uh, go ahead and go into St. Peter's Basilica. Let's look at the dead sheep. Before I go there, I want to give you an image of a dead sheep. Or a sheep. Okay, now I want to say something. I'm not disputing that these images are in, 
you know, the Vatican. I'm not disputing that at all. And I'm not disputing a lot of the commercials and things he's doing, and the logos and things like that. We know that they're here. At Matthew 13, it's clear as day that they're here. The parable of the wheat and, tar and the tares, um, which we might want to go over here. But, uh, matter of fact, let me do that. Because he's always doing it, but the way he does it is is kind of, uh, I don't know, disingenuous, I think. Okay, here's the parable of the wheat and the tares, all right? And another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that sowed good seed in his field, but while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and then went its way. And when the blades were sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From hence hath it tares. He said unto them, An enemy has done this. And the servant said to him, Wilt thou then we go and gather them up? And he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At the time of the harvest, I will say unto the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And then he goes down here and he explains it. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and the disciples came to him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man, which Jesus is the son of man, okay? So Jesus made the good seed, okay? Um, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Okay, so you've got good seed on one hand, bad seed on another, growing together in a world. They're not the same, okay? Good seed, bad seed, growing together in the world. Okay? The enemy that sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As wherefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. Notice he said, gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them in the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing of gnashing of teeth, then shall the righteous son shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So, I mean, it's clear as day. There's, you know, there's wheat and there's tares. And yes, they do from time to time interbreed. Daniel uh, 2.43 speaks of that. They shall mingle their seed with the seed of men. But it doesn't say that all men will come corrupt. Jesus said it would be as it was in the days of Noah. Surely, you know, they will be eating and drinking and marrying, giving a marriage. So there will be corrupted seed. But there's always a remnant, okay? So not, you know, everybody on the planet are fallen angels, and not everybody on the planet are, you know, children of the devil. Uh, the children of the devil are here just like the children of the Son of Man are here, or the children of God are here. You just read it or saw it for yourself. So with that, I just wanted to go over that with you real quick and clarify. And um, 
you know, some things because, I mean, he is really just getting more and more and more, you know, pushing this agenda. And to be honest, I'm really concerned about it because, you know, he mentions that he was uh, connected to the du DuPont family. And um, so I did a little quick research on that because I remember hearing something about those guys. And um, forgive me, but I'm really struggling here because, you know, I need some glasses and I haven't been able to secure those yet. Uh, so I thought I had some lined up once, but that fell through. But anyway, this talks about the bloodlines of the Illuminati. And, um, you know, guess who's fourth on the list? The, du the DuPonts. The du DuPonts. Which is what Jonathan says, you know, that he was connected to. And this was from uh, Fritz Springmeier, Bloodlines of the Illuminati. He's very, very, very well uh, um, uh, respected. Also, here's another book that came out that uh, talks about it. And uh, if not, and I'm sure this is a different book. But anyway, it lists the DuPonts. So, I mean, I'm wondering if somehow they got a hold of him and messed up his head because he is pushing a fallen angel agenda. Again, he's saying that he's a fallen angel and he's saying that Satan created all flesh. And Satan owns it all, and he doesn't. God owns it all. God owns everything. Nothing was made that God didn't make. Now, Satan can corrupt things, but if you look at the book of John, isn't that what the book of John said? It said, nothing was made that God didn't make. Okay? So, you know, how much more clear can it be? Um, I'll show it to you one last time. Okay, verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay? Okay, so with that, we'll call it a night. And uh, thank you guys for listening. I'm, I'm sorry I struggled a little bit reading here, but, uh, you know, small print gives me a little trouble. So you guys take care, and I hope this wakes a few people up as to the deception. Thanks a lot now. Take care. We can do anything for you. Please let us know. Take care now. Bye-bye.